Good morning, everyone. While you're getting logged in, I just want to remind you that you can use the chat feature on the side of the video to send us questions as we do this video. Um, you can also let us know where you're watching from and um, we'll get started. So again, we are here at the main wildlife park in Gray. Yeah, My awesome. name is Jade. Sorry, let me turn that down. My name is Jade and I'm an educator for inland fisheries and wildlife here in Maine. And here at the park, we have over 30 different species of native Maine wildlife. And they're all here for a number of different reasons. Um, that can be they were orphaned. Some of them have different injuries, long-term injuries, um, or they were even sometimes illegal pets that were confiscated. Um, but we have, like I said, over 30 different species and um, you can visit the park and you can check it out online, mainewildlifepark.com. You can also go to mefishwildlife.com to learn more about inland fisheries and wildlife and Maine's uh, many different wildlife opportunities. So today, of course, we are here to talk about moose. That is why I'm here at our moose uh, enclosure here at the wildlife park. And with me today is our bull moose, Byron. And we're gonna be talking about um, some interesting adaptations and facts about moose and a little bit about Byron himself also. So we will jump right into it. Of course, moose are the most iconic animal here in Maine. Um, the probably running second to them would be lobsters. But as far as land animals, moose are the largest land animal that we have here in Maine. And they are definitely a big draw for both residents of Maine and also people um, visiting our beautiful state. They attract a lot of attention and we can see why. Um, they are so large. They really capture um, our heart. And we're gonna talk about why that is today. So they're a member of the deer family. Um, a lot of people don't realize that because they're so large, but they're in the same family as the white-tailed deer um, that we have here in Maine. And those are the two species of deer that we have here, are the moose and the white-tailed deer. Um, the other types of deers, there's also mule deers, elk, um, caribou, also the barren ground caribou, which we often call reindeer. Um, and of course, white-tailed deer and moose. And one of the things that makes moose so iconic is of course their size. They are so large <laughs> and um, a full grown bull moose, the males, which are called bulls, um, they can be anywhere between 800 and 12 hundred pounds. So that's a very large animal. Um, the females that we call cows, they can be between 600 and 900 pounds, usually on average. And when they have their calves, their babies, we call them calves. Um, when they have a calf, they're usually born around 20, 25 pounds. Um, and they grow really, really quickly. Um, most calves can actually gain up to two pounds per day when they're nursing. So they grow very quickly. I'm gonna turn the camera just a little bit so we can see him moving to the other side. All right, he's gonna come over and eat on this other side, I think. Perfect. All right, so we talked about their weight and they're also very tall. I'm gonna grab this piece of browse here and see if um, Byron will come stand a little bit closer. So we can see his height. So I'm about five and a half feet tall. Um, and Byron at his shoulder is close to six and a half to seven feet tall. So he's a very big guy. Um, and an average male moose will get between six feet and seven and a half feet tall. And again, that's at their shoulder, that high point on their shoulder. Um, the cows again will be a little bit shorter but in, on average, most adult moose will be anywhere between six feet tall and seven and a half feet tall at their shoulder. So they weigh a lot and they're very, very tall. Now he's gonna give us a nice view of his bum. <laughs> um, so also I'm sure you've noticed as he's moving around that his antlers are coming in. He has this big rack growing on his head um, and deer have antlers. I have here 
big moose antler. Oh. So this is actually one of Byron's. This is his from last year, um, from 2020. And we collect all the moose antlers here at the park. And we write which moose that they're from and the date um, that we harvested them, that we found them on the ground. So this is Byron's from last year. And moose antlers are huge. Um, this one probably weighs between 15 and 20 pounds. And it's actually lighter now that it's off the moose's body uh, because they very quickly lose a lot of moisture. Um, so it's even heavier when it's actually on their body. And this is just one. So they carry two of these um, during the breeding season. And the breeding season is what we call the rut. So when moose go into rut, that is their breeding season. Um, and that is why they grow these antlers. So right now, Byron's antlers are covered in what we call velvet. It's these very fine, soft hairs that grow all over his antlers. And that's why right now his antlers are brown and they're not that um, kind of bone color. And those hairs are supplying his antlers with nutrient rich blood. So his antlers grow very, very fast because there is a lot of blood um, flowing to his antlers due to those little hairs covering his antlers that we call velvet. And moose antlers are one of the fastest growing tissues that we've ever been able to find that grows on mammals. Um, their antlers grow, so their antlers are the fastest growing um, tissue that we found on mammals. They grow very, very fast. And they do have these very strong necks and very muscular necks for holding up their antlers. Um, but they are still very, very heavy. And like I said, they're only gonna grow those during the rut. So during the rut, the males will use their antlers to protect their eyes. Um, they do what we call sparring or fighting with each other. Um, and they'll actually hit their antlers and lock their antlers together. Um, and that is to maintain their territory and they also fight for the girls. So that's when the bulls are fighting for cows for their opportunity to mate. Um, so their antlers help protect their eyes from other antlers and objects hitting them in the eyes. Um, they also will actually put their urine on their antlers. So they put their pee on their antlers and the scent helps attract females, helps attract cows. I'm gonna turn this again. I'm gonna try and keep the camera on him as much as I can. There we go. Cause I know you're here to see him. He's uh, the star of the show. Hey bud. <laughs> um, so again, those antlers are one of the distinguishing features of the deer and the deer family. Um, and they shed them after the rut. So why would they not wanna have those antlers year round? Again, they take a lot of energy and blood to grow those antlers. So it's a lot of their resources and nutrients put into something that they don't need year round. They only need it um, during the mating season. And it's a lot of weight to carry. So they do, again, they have very strong bodies and strong necks, but each one of those antlers is gonna weigh at least 20, 25 pounds. Um, and that's a lot of weight to carry around all year. So they shed them at the end of the breeding season so they don't have to carry them on their heads during the whole winter. I also have a deer antler here. So this is from a white-tailed deer. Um, and I just wanted to show you the size comparison between the white-tailed deer antler and the moose antler. So there's a very big size difference. And of course, white-tailed deer are also smaller than moose are. Um, there's that. All right. So one thing about antlers that is a common um, mistruth or, or kind of a, a myth is that you can look at their antlers to tell their age, um, or you can count the points on their antlers to tell you their age. So if they had eight points on their antlers, they're eight years old. Um, but that's not true. The antlers are unique to each individual moose and the growth of them is a lot more dependent on their overall health 
than it is on their age. So the testosterone pumps when they're in the rut and it helps those antlers grow. And depending on how well that moose has eaten, how well it's taking care of itself and how well it's been surviving, it's going to grow a better um, set of antlers than a moose that's not as healthy or not um, doing as well. And there is sort of an age tipping point. Um, so very young moose, when they're only between being a calf and all the way up to being about three years old, they'll grow a very, a much smaller set of antlers um, than an adult moose. And it's the same on the other end. So once they get into their senior age, um, so when they get over 10 years old, that's pretty old for a moose. Um, they're also going to start growing a smaller set of antlers. But all of the ages in between is sort of their sexually mature prime. And that is when they're going to be have the opportunity to grow the best antlers. Um, Byron is about eight years old. So he is in the middle of his life, um, kind of getting towards his older age. <laughs> Stand over here. Hey, bud. <laughs> He's coming over to say hi, showing off those antlers, showing off that velvet. And it also is a good segue into the next part of a moose I want to talk about, and that is their fur. So they have this very dark brown, thick fur. I have a piece here with me so you can see it up close. Um, but they have very long hairs and thick fur. And right now, he's in the process of going through one of his seasonal um, sheds. So he's in the process of shedding um, one of his coats and growing his new hair um, for the warmer months. So moose do not like the heat. They are definitely adapted for living in a cold climate. That's why we have so many of them here in Maine, why they're in Alaska and in the northern states um, where we get snow and nice long winters. Um, so they have this very thick fur for staying warm and dry during the winter. They have very special hairs. So I have a clump of the individual moose hairs here. And their hairs are actually hollow. So I can take this hair and you can actually sort of like bend it like a straw because there's air inside the hair like a straw. Um, and that is another adaptation for helping them stay warm during the winter inside each one of those hairs they can trap air close to their body and heat that air and it acts like a nice warm down blanket um, or down jacket during the winters all right so i was talking a little bit about the size of moose earlier they are very very large and with their large size comes a big appetite um, so moose in the wild, they eat a combination of browse. So you saw earlier, I gave him um, a tree limb, a branch. And from that branch, their favorite parts are going to be the leaves. Those are, have the mo most like moisture and nutrients um, locked in those leaves, of course, because they are the part of the tree that helps um, the tree get nutrients and keep it alive. And they want to eat those green leaves first. Then they eat the nice um, twigs and small pieces that are on the ends of the leaves, at the other ends of the leaves. And they'll even strip the bark off of the trees um, and eat the bark off of them also. They don't eat the hard wood center of the, of the trees, but they eat all the bark, all the leaves, and all the little twigs off of there. In the winter, when they have less um, leaves to eat, they'll be eating more bark and they'll start going away from their favorite trees and eating some of the trees that aren't their favorites. But their favorites tend to be um, maple, aspen, willow. Um, those are some of their favorite trees. And here in Maine, we have striped maple, which we often call moose maple because it is one of their favorites. So if you're ever out and you see that pretty um, striped maple trees, you can also call it moose maple. That's one of their favorite trees. Here at the park, um, we feed browse, of course. So we have a few different areas in the moose enclosure that we fill um, with lots and lots of tree limbs. We literally cut down tons, tons and tons of browse for the moose each year. 
Um, and on top of that, we have to supplement their diets. So moose are what we call ruminant. They have a organ in their body called the rumen, and it is a part of their digestive system that helps break down that really rough plant matter. So their rumen is very good at breaking down what's called cellulose in plants. Um, and it's very hard to break down. People um, can't break it down nearly as well as moose can because we don't have those rumens. Um, but it makes it so they can eat that really rough parts of the trees and um, get a lot of nutrients out of it to power their big bodies. So here at the park to take care of their rumens, um, we have to supplement them with different probiotics that help the bacteria in their gut and in their rumen um, break down their brows they get a lot of grain. So we give them grain to supplement their diet and also a lot of other vitamins and nutrient supplements. Um, the biggest one we give them is a kelp supplement. And that is to help supplement what they would be eating for aquatic plants in the wild. So moose have their big long legs and long noses for going in the water and getting those juicy um, aquatic plants out of lakes and ponds here in Maine. Um, and here at the park, we give them supplements to help um, help take care of those aquatic plant needs that they don't have here at the wildlife park. And that is one of the main reasons you do not see moose at other um, wildlife care facilities. They are very hard to keep fed. It requires a lot of food, a lot of time, uh, a lot of manpower to keep the moose healthy and keep their guts healthy. We are always tracking their gut health and their digestive health. Um, to make sure if we need to make any changes or adjust their diets at all um, to keep them healthy and living as long as possible. All right. And of course, talk about their digestive system. The very first part of that is in their mouth. So this is a moose jaw. And I really want to take a close look at these teeth. So they're herbivores. They don't eat um, any animals. They only eat plants. So they have these big flat teeth for grinding up plants in the back. This helps grind it up before it gets to their gut, before it gets to their rumen. Then they have these little teeth in the front, these incisors, and they use these to pluck the leaves um, off of the trees and strip the bark from the trees. They're also gonna use their tongue. They have a big strong tongue so they can use those to grab the leaves and twigs off of brows also. And here in the center, this is called the diastema. And this space between the back and the front, they don't have any teeth there. Um, so deer have this space, um, also um, horses and some other um, animals that are ruminant digesters. They don't have um, any teeth in this space in between. That's called the diastema. All right. So moose here in Maine, um, even though they're so big, people often have trouble finding them. Um, it's one of the things that makes the wildlife park so popular is because it's one of the few places in Maine you're guaranteed to see a moose because people come here to see them and it is sometimes very challenging. Um, even if you're in the right place, sometimes you just can't spot them. And part of that is due to their fur. So they do have this very dark fur that helps them blend in and camouflage in the forest. Um, but there are some tips and tricks for seeing moose out in the wild. Um, they are more active at dusk and dawn. So definitely waking up very early um, and trying to go see them during sunrise or sunset is the best time to try and see a moose. Um, thinking about their diet and the types of trees and plants that they like, you're gonna find them near bodies of water and in the woods. Um, so getting away from very developed areas um, and getting out into one of our many lakes and streams or ponds, um, people often have good luck spotting them when they're in a kayak or doing any kind of water recreation because they're easier to spot when they're in the water versus when they're in the woods. Um, and also looking for them in different places during different seasons. So in the spring and the summer, the bulls tend to go to higher elevation um, where it's cooler. They don't want to be down in the heat. Um, whereas the cows, they tend to stay um, at the lower elevation in the soft woods um, where there's more food. They often have calves with them in the spring and the summer. 
So they want to be where there's the most food options to help take care of themselves and their calves, especially when their calves are very little and they're very vulnerable. And that brings us into talking about some of the moose threats. I mentioned that those calves are very vulnerable. They're much more vulnerable than the large adult moose are. Um, adult moose do not have many natural predators. It takes a lot of energy um, to take down a moose and kill a moose. Um, so most of our smaller predators here in Maine are not gonna try and take down a moose. Um, the young calves and the newborns are susceptible to being taken down by a predator, um, like a coyote or a very ambitious bear. Um, they might hurt or kill um, a baby moose. But again, they're not really a big threat to the adults. The biggest threat to adults is us people. Um, so vehicle collisions are one of the biggest threats that moose face. Um, also, both the legal and illegal harvest of moose, um, disease, uh, starvation, and even accidental death. Um, moose sometimes do fall or drown um, just from an accidental death. Um, another problem is just environmental change, climate change. Um, like I said, they do the best in cold climates. Um, so as our earth is heating, um, it's definitely not good for some of these animals that really like it when it's cold. Um, even on a morning like today, um, it's about probably 60 degrees here at the park right now. And he has already decided it is getting too warm and has found a shady kind of muddy spot to go lay down. Um, and that's, again, why they're going to be active early in the morning and in the evenings um, when the temperatures are cooler. And one more threat that is um, definitely hurting our moose population here in Maine is winter tick. Um, you can learn more about all the details of winter tick on our website, mefishwildlife.com. Um, we have an article and page all about winter ticks um, here in Maine, but it definitely does hurt our moose population. Um, some of our moose have been found with literally thousands um, of ticks attached to their bodies. And especially in the winter, when they're already struggling to find um, all the resources that they need to make it through the winter, the ticks really hurt them um, by taking their blood. Um, so they do suffer from blood loss and hair loss, um, sometimes even behavioral changes and all those things often lead to those moose dying. Um, and again, find out more about winter tick at mefishwildlife.com. And also I wanna mention, we went over all the threats different ways that you can help moose here in Maine and different ways that inland fisheries and wildlife are helping moose. Um, the number one thing I always like to say is to practice safe driving. Um, avoiding those vehicle collisions is good for the moose and also very good for you. A lot of those vehicle collisions are not only fatal for the moose, but also sometimes fatal for the drivers um, or the people in the vehicles. So due to their height, again, they're between six, seven feet tall, their eyes are often higher than the um, lights on our cars, the headlights on our cars. So it can be really hard to see their dark bodies at night. Um, so drive slowly, use your high beams um, in rural places where you can. Um, avoid driving at night and during those peak active moose hours as much as you can. Um, also practicing safe moose viewing. Um, it's awesome when people come to the state or our own residents want to go try and see a moose in the wild, but you need to be careful. They're very, very large and they are a wild animal. Um, even though they might seem very slow and kind of lazy, um, graceful animals, they can charge. They can run very quickly. They're very strong and powerful. Um, so you never, ever want to get um, too close to them, always view them from a safe distance and never heckle or harass the moose um, here in our state because they'll get mad and they can kick very hard and charge and um, hurt you or hurt themselves. So very important tips for protecting our moose here in Maine. And of course, um, we have a very active moose management strategy um, within the department. You can learn more about that on mefishwildlife.com as well as a lot of other um, management projects that are happening in our state and um, our team of biologists that are constantly studying all of our species and um, 
advising all the different departments on the best practices for um, keeping these animals in Maine for as long as possible and in high numbers. Um, Maine has a very healthy moose population, so uh, we want to keep it that way for as long as possible. Uh, I talked a lot about moose. I'm sure some questions have come in. Um, so Laura in the office, if you are able to read some of those questions for me. Yeah, that was a great presentation. First off, we're all just wondering if we can see Byron again. I think so. So I would have to actually like pick up my phone and move because he went probably 80 feet that way, <laughs> that way and he's laying down. But um, after maybe a couple of questions, I'll wrap up and I'll go over there and see if we can see him one more time. All right, excellent. He was, he, he was a very good star. Um, so there uh, were a few questions that came in. If you have more questions, please write them in the chat. Um, but first off, so it's not the rut any, anymore or yet. And so why does he have those antlers then? So he's in the process of growing his antlers. Um, it does take time. So um, every spring they start growing their antlers. Then the rut happens um, in early fall, mid to early fall, and then it ends early winter. Um, so he is in the process of growing those antlers for the rut. And here at the park, we don't do any breathing. Um, so it's kind of all in vain for him. It's just part of his natural cycle. Um, he's not gonna have the opportunity to find a mate here, unfortunately for Byron, but um, he still grows his antlers and sheds them each winter. That's great. That Those are massive antlers. It must take a very long time. Uh, so you mentioned what the moose like to eat, but um, can you tell us a little bit about what moose droppings look like in case someone was out hiking and wanted to, wanted to know? Yeah. So just like everything else in the moose life, um, they're big. So the droppings are sort of similar to like a deer. Um, it's a large pellet. So I don't have an example here, I'm trying to see if there's one left by Byron anywhere. Uh, <laughs> um, but they're a large uh, kind of ovular oval kind of shaped um, pellet. And usually they're about like this big around. Um, so they're pretty big. Um, and that's one of the main ways that we actually keep track of his digestive health is by getting eyes on his scat or on his droppings um, as much as possible, because that gives us a good idea of how his gut is processing his food. Oh, that's, that's a great, and it's always fun to get to learn what animal scat or droppings look like. <laughs> um, so, um, another question came in about their, their eyesight. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if you know this one, but they're wondering, do moose really have a hard time seeing distances? And is it true that they can only see shadows at a certain distance? Yeah, so sight is definitely not one of the best um, senses on a moose. I'm not sure about the specifics of it, but I do know that they don't have the greatest eyesight. Um, they do have very good hearing. So they have those big ears and they're very good at hearing. Um, they also have a very good sense of smell but eyesight definitely isn't one of their strongest senses. Great, thank you. Another question just came in. Um, when is the peak activity time for moose, both during the year as well as, you know, during the, during the day, which are the bus busiest times for moose? Yeah, so during the day, it's gonna be at sunrise and sunset, dusk and dawn. Um, again, that's when it's the coolest, especially in the spring and summer when a lot of us are trying to get our eyes on a moose. Um, they're not going to be active midday and you are not going to see them when it's hot out. Um, people, I think, sometimes get frustrated here at the park when they come on a day that is beautiful for us. If it's 80 and sunny um, and we're so excited, but Byron is not. He just wants to go find a shady spot and chill for the day because um, that is way too hot for him. Like I said, it's about 60 degrees today, and he's already probably getting a little too hot and has found a nice shady spot to hang out. Um, so you're definitely going to want to look for them on a cooler um, day. And um, I said kind of seasonally in different places too. So in higher elevations, 
Um, they're going to see more bowls, especially in the spring and the summer. And when you're at a lower elevation, you're going to be able to see more um, cows. But especially in the spring and summer when cows have their babies, you want to be careful when you're viewing them. Um, they're very protective of those babies, as they should be. And you don't want to get too close. You want to give them their space um, so nothing happens to mom and baby or yourselves. That was really great, thank you. Um, so that seems to be it for all of our questions. Um, and oh, nope, one more. <laughs> is the park open to the public now? Yes, the park is open. Um, we have had a fairly regular season, <laughs> especially compared to last season. Um, so we opened in April and we'll be open until Veterans Day is our closing day. Um, you can see our park hours and fees and all of that information on our website, um, mainwildlifepark.com. Um, you can also email us or give us a call if you have any specific questions about the park. All right, that seems to be it for the questions. Thank you, Jane. Yeah, so I'm gonna grab the phone. So it might get a little uh, shaky here for just a minute. And I'm gonna go over and see if we can get a closer look at Byron. So we can say goodbye to him. <laughs> and this is one of his very favorite spots. It tends to be pretty muddy and shaded. So especially as it gets warmer, he really likes this spot. It's also close to his sprinkler. He has a sprinkler system that goes off every um, 45 minutes to hour um, to help him stay cool in the spring and the summer. And he has eyes on his food shed, which of course is one of his favorite spots. Also where he gets fed every day. Um, but as we say goodbye to Byron, I also want to remind everyone that today is the um, moose permit announcements. Um, that's happening virtually. It's streaming on YouTube at 1 p.m. today. Um, so tune in, check that out on the department, Maine Inland Fishery and Wildlife YouTube page to see if yourself, your friends or family um, get drawn for one of those 2021 moose permits. So thank you all so much um, for tuning into this program. Um, any future programs coming up will be posted on our website and you can also watch all of our past recordings on our YouTube page as well. Thank you 